What if the key to saving Manchester United lies in one manager, a manager whose tactical style could transform everything we know about United's game? Ruben Amarim's rumoured arrival has fans buzzing, and not just for his winning record. His tactical playbook could change how United lines up, attacks, defends and dominates on the field. But can Amarim's unique vision really work at Old Trafford? Ruben Amorim isn't your typical manager. He's already made waves in Europe with Sporting CP, building a team that's all about aggressive pressing, tight passing and a rock-solid back three. If Amorim takes the reins at United, it could mean a totally fresh start, one that builds around his precise vision, solid structure and bold attacking style. But there's a challenge. Will United's players, used to a very different system under Ten Hag, adapt to Amorim's way of playing? Let's break down what a Manchester United under Ruben Amorim might look like, from formation to style to some intriguing player role changes. Manchester United has struggled to find a consistent style, especially under Ten Hag, who never quite succeeded in creating a clear, defined play style. We saw moments of brilliance, but more often than not, inconsistency in tactics and execution. If you're a fan, you know it. They dominate one week, then look completely lost the next. This lack of structure led to gaps in defence, weak link-ups and, most frustratingly, an isolated attack that couldn't connect with the rest of the team. This is where Amorim's appeal really comes into play. His sporting side has thrived on a clear, identifiable style built around structure, possession and press. Amorim brings a system that prioritises control, both in offence and defence. It's not just a shift in formation, it's a total shift in the way United would operate on the field. But is it too big of a leap for this squad? So let's dive into how Ruben Amorim could reshape Manchester United's lineup. Amorim's been consistent with his tactical approach. A three at the back system, which gives his teams the stability they need to press high and keep possession. His preferred lineup is a 3 4 2 1, sometimes adjusted to a 3 4 3 or 3 5 2, but the three back core remains. Why does this matter for United? Well, under Ten Hag, United's typical 4 2 3 1 setup rarely, if ever, featured a back three. So a Morim system would be a totally new experience for most of the players. But it could also be exactly what United's backline needs. Let's talk specifics. For the centre of that back three, we're likely looking at someone like Mathis Delait, if Amarim has his say. As the central anchor, Delait would bring leadership and experience to a defensive structure that United's been craving. Then, for the wide centre-back roles, Lisandro Martinez and Lenny Yoro could fit well. Martinez, who struggled a bit when paired with just one other centre-back, could find his stride here. In this system, he'd have more room to play the ball forward and add width to United's defensive line. But that's not all. Amarim doesn't rely on just three defenders. His wing-backs are vital. They push high up the pitch to add width and support attacks, then fall back to form a back five when defending. Under Ten Hag, United's full-backs were supposed to do something similar, but the plan often fell apart. United's defence wasn't able to cover the gaps left by these high-flying full-backs, leaving them exposed to counter-attacks. Amarim's setup could offer a solution here too. Dalot and Mazraoui Natural fullbacks with attacking flair could benefit from the added cover in a back three, allowing them to focus on creating chances up the pitch. Luke Shaw, though currently injured, would also fit in nicely as a wing back, knowing he has the security of three central defenders behind him. But wing backs in Amarim's system are more than just wide defenders. Take Pedro Porro at Sporting, he contributed 13 goals and 14 assists before moving to Tottenham. And on the left, Nuno Santos proved just as effective, with 4 goals and 10 assists last season. Imagine United trying something similar, maybe even experimenting with a forward like Alejandro Garnacho or Amad Diallo as wingbacks to push a more aggressive attacking style. In midfield, Amorim's known to prefer defensively solid players who can press high up the pitch. Manuel Ugarte, who played under Amorim at Sporting, could reunite with his former manager at United. Ugarte was a ball winner at Sporting, ranking high in tackles and interceptions. With Ugarte focused on winning the ball back, the defensive line would have solid cover, which is a key part of Amorim's high-pressing game. Imagine Ugarta working alongside Kobe Mainu, one of United's promising young talents. Amorim has a track record of developing young players, and with Ugarta's ball-winning ability and Mainu's passing vision, United's midfield could become a dynamic force. Then there's Bruno Fernandes, 
and Morim typically keeps his central midfielders defensive, so instead of pulling Bruno back, he's likely to position him in a more advanced role, similar to Pedro Goncalves' role at Sporting. Goncalves was encouraged to drift in from the flanks, scoring over 80 goals and assisting more than 50 times. Bruno, United's main creative force, could thrive here, with more freedom to exploit central areas and a stable midfield behind him. The only adjustment might be Marcus Rashford cutting in from the left, meaning Bruno could play on the opposite side. And finally, up top, Amorim's approach with a pure striker, like Victor Gioqueres at Sporting, could benefit United's Rasmus Hoyland. Gioqueres scored consistently for Sporting, thanks in part to the service he got from the wing-backs and advanced wide players who moved closer to support him. For Hoyland, this could be huge. He struggled to make an impact, partly because of low shot volume and limited touches. Gioqueres averaged twice the touches in the box that Hoyland has seen, and this kind of involvement could unlock Hoyland's potential as United's main target. So, what would a fully operational Amarim system actually look like at United? Picture a defence-first mentality, a secure backline that morphs from three to five as needed. Imagine wingbacks bombing forward, feeding balls to an isolated but powerful Hodgeland up top. Envision Bruno Fernandes floating freely, finding space, creating chances, and taking advantage of the gaps left open by the opposition. This is not the United we're used to, but it's a United with potential one that could become resilient, balanced and exciting to watch. Amorim's record shows he knows how to instill a winning mentality and tactical consistency. But the real question is, can he bring this to United, a club so desperate for a comeback story? Subscribe for more updates on United's big decisions and upcoming tactical changes.